Hey everyone, welcome to Boosted Tutor. I'm Brandon, and this weekend was Conspiracy 2. So I only got to do one draft, sadly. And I love this whole like multiplayer format where it's like the drafting matters, which Conspiracy 2, the whole drafting part was awesome. Like just so much stuff going on. It's a little complicated, but I really loved it. Uh, then the playing part, really fun too, but I think the drafting might about did the playing a little bit, but whatever. Only got to do one. But I did record my whole draft, so everything I picked, and a little bit of the playing um, kind of sped that up to just get through it. But I wanted to show a little experience of what Conspiracy 2 is, of many people didn't get to do it, because sadly I think this will probably be the only weekend it's kind of ever played, just like Conspiracy 1. After the first weekend, no one really wanted to play it again, so I don't know, kind of sad, but I love it. There we go, it's a little long. Here we go. Sound of the pack opening. Ah, I love it. Barrera's Salvana Stampede for Green Green Sorcery Council's Dilemma. Starting with you, each player votes for wild or free. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card for each wild vote. Put those creature cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest into your library. You may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield for each free vote. So. This is basically you're going to want to like draft big creatures and this is a way to get free creatures in play. Always awesome. Definitely first pickable. You can easily draft like around it with just getting big creatures. So Next, this pack. Uh, Repulse. Meh. It's fine. Uh, Borderland Explorer. Basically it's a mana ramp but it's for everybody almost if they want to discard. Uh, I'm probably going to want to mana ramp some just because I want to try and get big creatures out if I'm going this green route. The Soul Caller, I mean, that's fine if I'm going the melee route or if I have like, a lot of tokens maybe. The Vampire, I like during Innistrad, Deceiver, not good for this set I don't think. Uh, Natural Unity, it's the uh, conspiracy where you pay a green when a creature attacks. If it's the name creature, you can pay a green to add a 1-1 one -one counter to it. Not bad. Um, it could be there's worse conspiracies. I definitely like making my green creatures always bigger. Colossus is always good, or Cyclops. I mean, the ill-tempered uh, Cyclops. Three, three, four. Was he five? And that can monsters sit for six to make him a six-six, and he has trample. Oh, he's a three, three, four, four. Even better. I'm gonna go big creatures. I'm guessing so far. So I'm gonna go with the ill-tempered Cyclops. Killing Fiend, not really my game plan here. I'm not going instants and sorceries. I've got that one who, oh, but never mind, Fang of the Pack. Uh, melee to 5 3 for 5 and a green. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains melee until end of turn. So, it's a big creature, it dies pretty easily to things, but if it's given, it, can, it gets bigger, obviously, if you use the melee. And it gives another one of my creatures another ability, that's always good. So, say I attack with three creatures, two of them beginning with plus three, plus three. I like that. I got Infest there. You got Irresistible Prey. Oh, Voyaging Seder. I definitely want to do the um, ramp plan. So that's the two drop that lets me untap target land into one, two. It's fine. It's non-threatening when it comes down. So that's always good as an early play, I find. Burn Away. That's a pretty good removal spell. So it's four and a red for an instant. It deals six damage to target creature. When that creature dies, you exile all cards from controller's graveyard. So six damage for five mana late game. There's gonna be a lot of big creatures out, probably doing stupid things. And I don't know if graveyard interaction has that much to do in conspiracy, but you wanna take a burn spell. All right, so we got another explorer. We got the fiery fall, another removal spell. Five damage to target creature for six mana, and I can basic land cycle for one and a red, so another good late game thing and early game if I want a mana ramp or just fix my colors. Oh, but then you got the Hunter. This is four and a red. Reveal Priority Hunter as you draft it, and note how many cards you drafted this draft round, including Hunter. He has a menace. He enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it, where X is the highest number you know for a card's name, Hunter. Whatever his name is. So, 
I kept reading this and reading this and I'm like, okay, I think I've got this, but I'm not quite sure. So I ended up having to ask uh, Vicente next to me. He's a judge, so he kind of helped me out. I was like, okay, so I, he's a 5-5, five five, right? <laughs> Definitely end up taking him because a 5-5 five five for 5 that has a menace, pretty good, I have to say. If I draft another one later on and it's bigger, then they're both bigger, so that's awesome. Spoilers, I draft another one. Alright, so we got Plummet. Good. That's fine removal. There's always going to be a flying creature, most likely. You got the Strength in Numbers. Kite Cell, which I like, because hey, why not just give my giant guys flying? It's a very unsuspecting card, but it can do so much work later on. You're just like, oh, I have this 8-8 eight eight that has Trample. Well, guess what? Now, this equipment I put down later or early on, now it makes him flying. And he's coming at you. Uh, bounty... There's nothing really in my color here, so I was like, well, maybe we'll just take the bounty for some land cycling. And I was like, well, I'm not totally on these two colors yet, so maybe I'll just take a blue removal spell, which I ended up doing anyway, so. Okay, so we got some blue here, some red, one green. So we got this red guy, four and red for four, two. When he attacks, he may go target creature, defending player controls. It's not that great, but... Damn, it's a red creature, 4-2 for 4, he'll at least kill something, but I don't know, I just needed anything. I didn't want a 3-3 defender for 2. I mean, yeah, it's fine early game, but late game is going to be horrible. Yeah, ugh. Alright, lots more blue. This is where I'm like, wait a minute, is blue open? So, I don't know, but my reds, I got some more red there. Green kind of dried up. Gang of Devils, 5 and a red. Uh, this is the 4 and a blue for a 2-1. It's a 5 drop. That's a 2-1 flyer that can become bigger or can draw you cards. Or at least cycle you cards. That's pretty good. So, I already taken a blue card. Might as well take another flyer. That's good. In case I have to switch colors. Here again, we don't have much. That conspiracy is not bad. But at this point, I'm just like, I don't really want to take conspiracies. Because they seem to be going around like crazy. And I take that, that guy because he had a cool ability. Here, don't really have anything, so I'm like, okay, well, I just took a white card. Let's try another white card, 2-2 two, two flyer, it's fine. There we go, Seder somehow came back, so I definitely take that. Um, Firefall came back, removal, basic land cycling, I'll take it. Might as well take the conspiracy, it's green, I'm in green, and that white thing is not that great. So, definitely so far on the green, red, stompy deck, I guess you call it. Just big creatures. Have some removal. All late game, kind of, so. Alright, second pack we have... Token. And then we have... Not that. Oh, guess what? <laughs> green, red, rare. So I'm already in green, red. This is amazing. And this card is amazing. Two red, red for Dragonlair Spider. Reach. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may put a 1-1 insect creature onto the battlefield. So, it's a 5-6 also with reach. So, in this one, you definitely need some flyers or reach. Because if you don't, flyers are going to kill you so bad. Like, say everyone except you has flyers. Guess what? You're going to be getting attacked because you're open. Alright, so here we have... Alright, so nothing uh, is that great in green and red in this pack. But we do have a Mythic Conspiracy, which is Hymn of the Wilds. Start the game with this Conspiracy face up in the Command Zone. The first creature spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. You cannot cast instant or sorcery spells. Okay, a little bit of an upside, kind of a big downside, but I am in green and red, and that's mainly going to be a creature deck. So being able to cast like these bigger creatures for one less each turn, well at least the first one, pretty good I have to say. I wanted to try out the Hymn, it's a Mythic, might as well. And... Let's draft around this deck. Let's make it. Let's do it. All right, so black card, black card, green. That guy's not bad. Um, that guy's not very great. And then, oh, here we go. Oh, we had another conspiracy that was rare. Uh, Emissary's Ploy. Before drawing your hand, your opening hand, choose one, two, or three. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast creature spells with converted mana cost equal to the chosen number. 
It's okay. It's really good for early game, of course. Like, if you have a ton of three drops, probably take this, but I'm going for bigger creatures. And okay, so here we have Animus, four and a green, four, four, four. Draft Animus face up. As you draft a card, you may remove it from the draft face up. Those cards aren't in your card pool. If you remove a card, creature card with flying from the draft with cards named Animus, Animus has flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touched, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, and Vigilance. Okay, so that's pretty amazing if you can get any creature one of those like late game, or late draft, I mean. So say it's like your last three picks, and it's a black card, you're not in black, but it has Death Touch, or has Flying, anything. You just feed it to the Animus, basically, and it automatically gets those. So, really awesome. That was my idea. You'll see it didn't quite work out later on, but... Alright, next pack. We got an Ember Beast. That's, uh, that's pretty good. We got some white cards. Don't need those. I'm definitely two colors right now. Evolving Wilds. That'd be good if I was three colors, but... Uh, Corny Assault. I mean, if I'm going the non... Instant Sorceries, I pretty much just have to take the Ember Beast because that's all there was for me. I mean, look at that. Just not even a green card, which really sucks. <laughs> a Twin Bolt, can't play it. Primal Blast, can't play it. Hurly Burly, can't play it. Uh, we've got the Operative, that's pretty nice. But then I have this guy, Juniper Order Ranger. Three green, white. For a 2 4, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put one counter on that creature, and one counter on Jupiter Order Ranger. That card's kind of freaking awesome. So it's white, I'm not in white, but I'm thinking, I could splash it. So if I'm putting that into an all-creature deck, it's just going to get huge. It does have an evasion, which kind of sucks. But also if I have that spider, which, okay, happy Christmas land. If I'm just making tokens with it, then yeah, they're just going to make two twos. And it's going to be a huge creature, so pretty good. So now we've got the Liberator, who's a 3-2 for 3 and a green. He has Trample and Melee. That's it. Kind of boring, but yeah, he's fine. I have Killian Fiend, who is pointless in my deck. Netcaster Spider. All right, we have three and a green for two, three with reach. Whenever Netcaster blocks a creature with flying, Netcaster Spider gets plus two, plus oh until the turn. This card is always good. Basically, when it blocks, it's a four, three. It can block flyers. In this, in Conspiracy, you want things with reach or flying, like I said, because you're going to be blocking just like people are going to play like early flyers, just be lame and... Honestly, the Monarch thing kind of makes it so you want to be able to just ping people. So it's a good way to block that. All right, so now another, another Fiend. Don't need that. Overrun! Guys, I know I have the Hem, which means I can't play Instant or Sorcery, but they just passed me one of the best cards for an all-creature deck. And I'm like debating like, oh man, if I take this, I can't play it. But do I just not play the him? So we have the uh, noble banner. I'm not want oh because I was slashing white. I was still looking at white a little bit, but eh, that conspiracy is for spells only. Got another cyclops. What's better than one cyclops? Two cyclops. Got garbage fire again. Still thinking I'm going to play the him, so I can't really do insert of sorceries. Uh, so I'm going to skip that. Trump Blast, can't play that. The only thing here I really have is the uh, Gang of Devils, which I'm not happy with playing. Probably going to end up cutting it, but that's all I have. So might as well take it. Here we got another Ember Beast and a Garbage Fire. So I'm not going to take a Garbage Fire because I'm on the him thing. Right now I'm looking to see what I can do with Animus maybe. I was seeing if maybe I could do Flash, but Flash isn't one of the keywords I can use, so I end up taking the Ember Beast. I just got one red card here. Crown Hunter, basically you become the Monarch and he can only attack if a uh, defending player is a Monarch. So, so pointless, but remember, do you have Animus? I don't like the Crown Hunter at all. So looking at what I could put under him, so I put him. He 
here there's nothing really, I mean, I'm looking at the uh, conspiracy mainly because I'm thinking of splashing white. So, I mean, that's kind of pointless to me. Unless someone had a board wipe, which I don't know if there are any board wipes. I'm pretty sure there are, but they end up taking the conspiracy. Because there's nothing I could feed to Animus. Yet again, nothing I could feed to Animus. They're both red cards I can't really play. But if I end up not going him, I'll just trumpet blast, overrun, that type of thing. Here we go. Uh, nothing. I mean, you can play a Sylvan Bounty, but I'm looking for stuff to feed to Animus, and there's nothing except for flying, which here he has. I just end up taking the Sylvan Bounty. Then, Hen and Agenda. So the creature you name gets uh, basically fire breathing. And then there was like a mess up with the packs. People didn't zone draft, so that's why I got it was so off like that. So here we have another one of those conspiracies, and I can definitely use a red dragon. So this is Skyline Despot. Five red red, when he enters the battlefield, you become the monarch, and the beginning of your upkeep, if you're the monarch, you get a 5-5 five five dragon token, basically. You gotta make sure you have your defenses up when you play this, because when you play it, they're gonna, everyone's gonna come right after you. Okay, so Tormenting Voice, can't play that. We got that guy. Uh, nope. Nothing I can really... Oh, murder. Wish I could take that, but nope. Uh, gutter snipe, you will not help me at all. Yet again, nothing I can even feed to Animus. I guess I could have feed, fed him to Animus and give it Flying and Trample. If I figure it's a creature I can play, probably rather just do that than waste a pick on just feeding Animus when I'm thinking, oh, later on there'll be plenty of things. There won't be plenty of things. So yeah, I take the Liberator. So here we got Flame Slash, which really nice, but yet again, no instants or sorceries. Bismarch, nope. Crown Hunter, don't like him. Just nothing getting past me that I want to play with for because I just go in creatures only and nothing. So what? I can give my Animus Defender? Nope. I'm flying, I already have it, and there's nothing else I can even feed to him. So I end up taking the Crown Hunter, which is ugh, gross. Another murder, another Vaporkin. Uh, Goblin Tunneler, eh, not really have many small guys, if any, to use his ability on. Renzo's Ruffians, that's pretty nice. Killing Fiend, again, not gonna use him. So the Ruffians is four red red, uh, melee, and whenever it does combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each opponent. And I think it's a 2 2, so. Doesn't do much, but if he has melee and, say, I do Trumpet Blast or Rubber Run or something like that, because I'm if I'm not going to go the him route, it's going to do maybe wipe out all my opponents. So, got another Netcaster Spider. Hurly Burly, can't play that. Plummet, nope. Another Conspiracy, I already have one of those. Netcaster Spider, like I said, going to need those for the reach, and it's just a good card overall, so might as well end up taking that. Okay, like we got another Hunter, very nice. Um, he was a 5-5, but this is like, I think I have one more round in this draft, or one more pick, so he will be a 6-6, six, six, which make the other one 6-6. Six, six. So I have two 6-6s six, with Menace for 5. So, yeah, pretty awesome. The Fiery Fall, don't really need that. Uh, Entourage of Trust, it's okay. Prey Upon, wish I could have taken that. Very nice. So the Entourage is... 400 green, when it was battlefield, you become the monarch, and it can block an additional creature each combat as long as you're the monarch. And it's a 4-4. Four, four. So 4-4-4-5 four, 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 that can do block two creatures, that's not bad. It's gonna die, but it's not bad. Another crown hunter, don't need him. Voyaging Sire, yes please, I will take two of those. This guy, he went around. I think he was Vicente's last pick. Nobody wanted him. Alright, so we got more instant sorceries I can't play. Goblin Tunneler, I can play him, but he's not that great. But like I said, it's the only creature here that I can play. Or I could take the Conspiracy, right? I mean, splashing white. But nah, take him just in case. I have small creatures. Here, there is literally nothing for me. <laughs> Probably should have taken the rare, but I figured... I can't play it, and if I'm playing against someone who can play it, that's an advantage for me, so I might as well pass it and hope, not hope, but if I get in a pod with someone who 
plays it. All right, we'll get to draw cards. So I just took that guy because he's good and didn't want him to have him. And yet again, still nothing to feed my Animus. Like the only thing so far is flying and defender. Like what the? I am taking the defender. Why? I don't know. He said nothing else. Here, yet again, already have a Goblin Tunneler. Don't need two. I don't even know if I need the one. Uh, I was looking. Already have flying on Animus, so I just take the Conspiracy, which that's two of those. That's fine. Conspiracies, common conspiracies aren't bad. Um, actually, pretty good. They're like basically abilities if you can get them like your last picks. Yeah, they're free cards. Who cares? And, oh, okay. I can play that because I'm going to splash white. All right, and here's my green red splashing white deck for conspiracy. Uh, two voyaging sayers, awesome. Gonna just ramp up like crazy, hopefully. Got a kite cell to make my later guys fly, which is hopefully gonna get over a lot of grounds like build up. Netcaster spiders, two of them, basically to block early flyers like Vaporkin. Two Ember Beasts because they're efficient and cheap. Two ill-tempered Cyclo uh, cyclopses because they're good on turn four and they're great later on they become six with trample Renzo's ruffians like i said like i ended up not going the hem route i just cut it it was a cool thing but i had overrun and <laughs> i'm not gonna not play overrun i mean that card's amazing especially in multiplayer where i can just maybe wipe everyone out with if i attack with all my creatures who knows so uh Grindos ruffians you know attack with everyone overrun then just everyone dies, hopefully. Uh, Goblin Racketeer, mainly just because it has four power and I can goad something maybe, but it was just there to fail the curve. Two Hunters at six, six, there, so they're six, six for five mana and they have Menace. Yeah, pretty good. And I also, in my conspiracy, I named them the Nature's one where they get one, one counter. So, you know, pump them up, maybe like take out two creatures and then give them one, one counter so they survive. Uh, I think I gave the ill-tempered Cyclopses the fire-breathing one because they have trample. I gave, actually, I gave the uh, ruffians the indestructible just so when they attack, because only two twos, they'll live. <laughs> so next I have Juniper Order Ranger. Splashing white for that, basically. I have the Animus. Um, it's a 400 green for a 4-4 four -four with flying. And that's it, sadly. But still pretty efficient. Just wish I had more abilities. Burn away, since I'm not doing the him route. Might as well get some... Removal in there, overrun of course, just so amazing. Thing of the pack, gonna give some other creature, which I'm gonna have a ton of creatures, so might as well give another one melee. Uh, Fiery Fall, more removal, and also can get me lands if I need them. Dragon Lair Spider, freaking amazing card, that's just awesome in multiple or multiplayer. Uh, the Stampede, which will hopefully just give me some free creatures. Sadly, will make me a target if I get it off and get something amazing. Uh, still in Bounty, mainly just there for the basic land cycling, but if I need 8 life, I need 8 life. And Skyline Despot is a big flyer that will put a big target on me, but by the time it's out, hopefully I'm already built up my defenses enough. Okay, so starting our game, pot of 4, know everybody, they're all cool, so it's going to be a nice relaxed game. What I didn't know was that nobody starts off as the Monarch, you have to play a card that says you're the Monarch, and that's when the crown I brought, uh, eventually gets, you know, put on someone's head. So as you can see, early game where we got two flyers out, I have a satyr out, and of course I have no way of like blocking flyers, so I'm the one getting hit first. So that's why you have to have something with reach or flying because people are just going to attack you because, hey, guess what? You can't block. <laughs> so what's funny over here is Michael ends up playing Vaporkin and then pulls out his Conspiracy we're like, oh, what? what's the name thing on here? And he's all like, oh, it's Vaporkin. Like, but you didn't write it down. He's like, well, all my conspiracies are Vaporkin. We're like, well, wait a minute. You can't just not put the name on the card or have some kind of note and then just play your first card and then say, oh yeah, they're all Vaporkin. So we gave him a hard time about it, but we were cool about it. We didn't really care that much. It ended up dying anyway. But his strategy for his deck basically was he had like two spy kits and he was just going to put them on stuff to make them all Vaporkin all the time. So, <laughs> kind of a cool idea. Nice use of Spy Kit. I like it. So, so far we have over here... 
Oh, look, someone became the monarch already. So basically he played the card where you become the monarch and target player has to sack a creature and he picked on Michael, mainly because the African thing, I think. Vicente did not want to wear the crown, sadly. Vicente was going like, I think a just a blue-white control deck because he had like ghostly prison, which is fine. Actually, was he going five colors? I don't know. Not really what I want to do in multiplayer, but I'm aggressive like that. And then David was going the um, black-red, I'm the monarch, and I get ability. So like the one that pings everyone, he gains life type of thing. He had like two of those. He had that one that sacrificed stuff. He was the monarch a lot. He was drawing cards like crazy. Not much happened, I would say. I think it was just kind of very a slow, grindy game. People were getting pinged by David all the time. I didn't really get to attack that much. I just sat back. I did the little finger method where I just sat back, built up my forces, and waited until I could take care of one out at once, basically. Vicente was going the mess with people route just because he's Vicente and he likes to do that. David was going the kill everyone with my like monarch abilities. And Michael was going the I'm going to get a giant creature out and just like build them up with my conspiracies and kill people. So it was his first conspiracy draft. Compared to the first conspiracy, I like this one better. The drafting was more fun. And the monarch ability really let people just like force them to attack. Because the first conspiracy people just hang back and didn't want to make this a target. But this way you're just getting people and you're becoming a monarch and there's no hard feelings. It's like, hey, I want to draw extra cards. So that's basically why you're doing it. Yeah, in this game, I wasn't really doing too much, I would have to say, until I saw Vicente was a uh, tapped out, so he couldn't counter anything. So I played the Dragon Lair Spider, which, I mean, pretty much wins me the game in the end. Spoilers. But yeah, just nobody had a way of dealing with it. I think the only way anyone had a way of dealing with it was um, Vicente with his Garbage Fire doing 11, but he had already used that. But yeah, those uh, guys that ping us for one were just pinging us down. I think we got down, like I got down to eight. I think it was he got down to four just because of them. Oh yeah, I forgot. Then David played Gutter Snipe, which, oh, that was just so bad. That thing was just going to destroy us. Vicente decides to kill the Gutter Snipe because he knows in the long game, that's probably just going to kill all of us. So he used his removal spell on that instead of a spider, which he probably should use on a spider. But who knows? I mean, either way, it's like one of those cards is going to end up winning this person the game. So now I'm with the six spider or six insects. He had taken control of my hunter. And it, it had goad, but Vicente was saying because of Ghostly Prison, I was able to attack David because I could choose not to pay the two to attack Vicente, and therefore I could choose, I could attack David. I don't know. But I ended up attacking him anyway. <laughs> Attacked him with the hunter and all the insects. And used his death touch to kill my hunter. But guess what? Just played another one. Yeah, Michael was already taken out. I forgot about that. Uh, I think David ended up killing him. But then David dies. Vicente sees that you know, I have too many creatures, I'm just going to be able to pay, and I think Vicente was like one or two life, so it didn't really matter. And yeah, I ended up winning, so. And well, Vicente didn't take it too well. <laughs> he was just, he was, I don't know what Vicente was doing, but yeah. <laughs> he was sorry about it. So that was Conspiracy. I won, ended up winning three packs, and here we go. We'll go through them and see what we get. Sadly about this set, I don't think there's actually that much value in it because there's so many cards that you just don't do anything with, like conspiracies. We got a stunt double. Okay, that's a cool card, but it's not gonna see playing anything. Maybe commander, but just like the first conspiracy, there was what, one or two cards that were something? This one at least you have like Berserk, but they're all mythics, except for, I think they're all mythics. Got another death spot, don't really need that. And of course it's a monarch ability, which I don't know how much Monarch is going to play into other formats. He's actually at 7 mana. And then I got another him, uh, Mythic, but not something that's going to be worth anything. And Follow in the Footsteps, which is a cool card, especially for EDH. So, I mean, 
I don't really care about the value for this set because it's all about how much fun it was. All right, like I said, a little long, but I love this format. Hopefully, they'll do Conspiracy 3. I know Conspiracy 1 didn't do so well. Conspiracy 2, hopefully, it's not much value in it. There's like, you know, some legacy staples in there that they kind of just threw in. But it's mainly for drafting. That's why there's so many cards that are useless after you open them. Like, just draft matter cards, but whatever. I was going to get a Japanese box to open on the channel, just because that's cool. But I can't find them anywhere. Like, eBay doesn't have any. Just keep searching. There's nothing. Not going to get a, an English box because it's kind of pointless to me. Like, I don't know. This is for drafting. Anyway, you can follow me on Twitter, Booster underscore Tutor. And remember, hail to the Monarch, baby.